This is Shear in Surrey, an unspoiled English village. The sort of English village you see on the travel posters. And travellers come to see it and to fill their photograph albums with pictures of Britain's past. and her extraordinary way of life. And the further they come, the more extraordinary it must seem. My name is Abraham Wrestley. I have come a long way to photograph this English village. My home is very far off, in a place called Kuwait. Actually, photography is just a hobby with me. I am here for five years studying building construction. And you'll be using your knowledge back in your own country? Oh, yes. We are building a whole new city in Kuwait. I must go and help. And right here in London is another visitor from Kuwait. My name is Ahmed Ali Dwight. I've come from Kuwait to study international relations. Cultural relations too, I see. I suppose they're all part of your studies. Well, it happened that I like music. And after all, music is an international thing. I enjoy Italian opera as much as Kuwaiti folk songs. And back in Kuwait, you'll use your experience for what? I'm going into government service. My name is Badr Hamad Sultan, and I too come from Kuwait. Now, I've been in Britain for the past four years studying medicine. Any particular branch of medicine? For general medicine at the moment. But eventually, I hope to specialize in tropical diseases. Then you'll return to practice in Kuwait. Definitely. At home, we are building up a tremendous medical scheme, and I would like to play a part in shaping it. We have great opportunities ahead of us. And here it is, Kuwait, the place you've been hearing about. The place that's growing so fast that by the time you see these pictures, the skyline will have changed again. Let's take a close-up on Kuwait.
and the riches from all these far distances come back to Kuwait in manufactured goods. Motor cars and razor blades, aircraft and trockets, furniture and tennis rackets, frozen foods and feather dusters, cameras and candelabra, microscopes and magazines, timber, steel and string. In these streets, you will find the Arab shrewdness of bazaar and marketplace. But you will find also the telephone and the cable, Hello? bringing in business information from the whole industrial world. and you will find another side to Kuwait. For this is a sovereign state, ruled over by the seventh of his family's line, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah al Salim al Sabah, who governs his fast-developing country with an inherited understanding of his peoples, inherited from civilizations that were old when Greece and Rome were young. The ruler and his council of state have made their country modern, but their way of government is Arab, based on the traditions of the family and on the Muslim faith. With these, go responsibility for the people's happiness, their welfare, and their health. Kuwaitis can take their medicine in any of 21 state clinics, part of a free medical service, with hospitals and equipment that rival any in the world. Medicine is far more than money and buildings and the latest equipment. It's the quality of the doctors and nurses that is the backbone of any medical service. And Kuwait has attracted the best from all over the world to serve its people with a sense of humor and humanity. The future of Kuwait, as of any quickly growing country, belongs to the young. And the government has made itself responsible for their education. When these children grow up, 
they will know that they had the good fortune to be young and vigorous in a country that is young and vigorous too. Every day to more than a hundred schools come 40,000 children, or maybe one or two more. school children at school every day means 40,000 healthy appetites. And even after the squarest meal, there's always little Oliver Twist who asks for more. The children's food problem is tackled with imagination. One huge central kitchen in the middle of the city provides midday meals for the pupils of over 50 schools. Since the first oil drillings, Kuwait has welcomed people of many nationalities to help her development. The necessary qualification is skill, engineering, scientific, or administrative. 
the skills that have enabled this small country to make her wealth productive. have brought their own way of life. They are free to worship as they please. They brought their wives and their wives' necessities. Their children and their children's pets. Their own culture. Their incomprehensible enthusiasm. Their passion for gardening. And above all, their patient ability to teach. Bearing catch. Ava piston. Piston. Ava connecting rod. And the people of Kuwait have matched it with their own ability to learn, and to learn quickly. Pupils in Kuwaiti schools and technical colleges, and pupils far away in the centers of learning of Europe, America, and the Arab world, a whole generation of Kuwaitis are learning their way about a completely new field of knowledge, a world of circuits, systems, frequencies, reactors, bloodstreams, power curves, wingtip vortices, the things we all of us have to learn today. Once, the Arabs were the teachers of the world. It's outstanding chemists, doctors, geographers. Here, in the quiet of libraries, and in the cut and thrust of argument, the same urgent spirit of inquiry is born again. Today, the city gates no longer open on the desert. For eager young Kuwait, tomorrow is high adventure. But for many years yet, the material springboard of that adventure will be oil. Today, much of the energy and resources of Kuwait is needed to keep the oil industry constantly supplied with the technical facilities, the equipment, and the manpower it needs. Hello? Oh, hello, Arthur. How are you? You're short of five? Oh, okay, I'll tell you. How many? Forty number, three in. Okay. Last year, seven million pounds worth of orders were placed by the oil industry in the town. And the resources of Kuwait have had to be equal to it. To swell the labor force, thousands of workers come from neighboring countries to join the ranks of Kuwaitis in regular employment. But a far-sighted government wants to be sure that the whole country will benefit from the great wave of prosperity that oil has brought. So they've set up a government development board, which studies the needs of the country and tackles them with imagination and vigor, and a willingness to try out new ideas. <laughs> These are some of the facts they have to cope with. First of all, Kuwait is a country of deserts. Without help, very little grows. Sometimes in the summer, nature can be seen at its most unrelenting. The wind from the north, the Shamal, can blow the fine dry sand that storm force. But nature has a way of evening things out. For below the sand, the oil reservoirs contain vast quantities of natural gas. As a source of energy, natural gas is invaluable. It generates electricity for Kuwait industries. It 
distills millions of gallons of seawater daily to supply this arid country's greatest need, fresh water. Fresh water has also been discovered underground. And now, even the nomadic Bedou tribesmen in their isolated tents are supplied with fresh water by tanker lorries. enough water, miracles can happen. Miracles like this. This is the government experimental farm. It covers a hundred acres and it's one of the most significant projects in the world today. For the world is very short of food. Two-thirds of the human race is undernourished. One of the answers is to conquer the deserts of the earth. Here in Kuwait, the desert is beginning to heal. They are proving that, properly cared for, livestock from Europe can live and thrive in temperatures of nearly 130 degrees. They are proving that with enough water and a lot of science, the desert can be turned into soil and bear fruit. experimenting with hydroponics, a method that requires no soil at all. Vegetables are planted in gravel or vermiculite and fed with chemicals dissolved in water. The water is then drained off and used again. of the experimental farm are only a beginning. But in the end, the wilderness, the solitary place shall be glad, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. In Kuwait, the worship of Islam lies firm, like a bedrock on which to build a new way of life. And with the belief go the traditions that belong to the Muslim world. One of these traditions is the Majlis. Through the Majlis, every citizen with a petition or with a grievance against his neighbor or the state has the right of direct access to his rulers. How many of us in the West can do the same? Access to the government, equality before the law. These are assured to every citizen of Kuwait. There you have a close-up on Kuwait. Bustling and vigorous, cosmopolitan and friendly. And in the middle of the hubbub, the Kuwaitis themselves. Accepting progress, but valuing tradition. And striking a balance between the two. by nature, yet not content to rest on nature's gifts. 
fashioning the wilderness, molding the desert, changing themselves. And these youngsters they've taken so much thought for, what lies ahead for them? One thing is sure. To whatever they turn their hands and heads, they'll bring those qualities of enterprise and level-headedness that have made this state of Kuwait a state of excitement. Here, at the heart of the Arab world.